Buongiorno. I am uh, the last session. Uh, so uh, I apologize that after two very intense days that I will make you listen to English for another 45 minutes. Um, I think Roberto will do his demos in Italian, so you will get a brief respite. Uh, but uh, uh, camera's in my face. That's good. Paparazzi. <laughs> OK. So um, thank you to uh, Giuseppe, Daniele, and the whole team for asking me to come back to Domino Point um, for the, the second year in a row. This is uh, one of the best events in the Lotus community all over the world. Um, very professionally run, great sponsors, very good input for us at IBM. Um, I'm a little disappointed to not be shooting arrows off a castle this year, but you know, <laughs> We, we, we're okay with being in Milano. So um, this presentation is similar to the presentation I've been giving really since Lotusphere, with the main difference being that we're getting much, much closer to shipping things. So I have some updates and some changes uh, that we'll talk about as we go along. I may also once or twice slip out little things that we're thinking about that we haven't yet decided. Um, those are really good things to put on Twitter because uh, my coworkers will come ask me what I'm talking about. Um, uh, this is not translating well. Uh, it's a joke. Uh, <laughs> um, but you can tweet whatever you want. Um, uh, it's fine. But uh, you know, it's always good to sort of test some, some new ideas while we're on the road. So um, in the last 12 months, we've been very busy in the Notes Domino space. Um, continued market momentum. Uh, IDC has just issued their market share reports for uh, calendar year 2011. And in the um, messaging collaboration space, we continue to be the number two player with about 30% of the market. In the uh, social software space, IBM is number one significantly uh, over the competition. So across collaboration overall, we continue to be the lead provider in the marketplace. Some of the areas where we're seeing growth, new sales, new customers uh, in the Notes Domino space include uh, Domino Express. We made a number of changes to Domino Express uh, in calendar 2011, including uh, lifting the restriction for Collaboration Express and Messaging Express um, that sized the purchase of Express based on number of employees. And now it is based on the number of users in a domain. We also added clustering to Domino Express uh, Collaboration. So lots of changes there. And as a result, we're seeing significant growth in new license sales in Express. Uh, we're also seeing growth in Domino overall. The number of uh, processor units on active co contract with IBM right now is higher than at any point it's been in the last four years. So um, there are more Domino servers out there today than there were since 2008, 2009. And that's despite server consolidation and other activities that most organizations have undertaken to reduce the number of servers in your, in, in your environments. Um, we also are growing at the high end of the market. There are now more Domino customers active today that have more than 100,000 seats of Notes Domino uh, than there were three or four years ago. So growth at the low end, growth at the high end, growth in servers overall. Um, I can't cover everything that my team is responsible for in a presentation like this. Uh, we're responsible not just for Notes and Domino and Smart Cloud Notes uh, and Traveler and Designer and um, uh, what else am I going to talk about? Um, I don't know there's probably a couple other things in here, um, but also responsible for products like uh, Same Time, which you know, whole other presentation, uh, Lotus Protector for mail security and mail encryption. That line's doing very very well. So um, there's lots of stuff that's not on the slides that um, represents where we're we're having very good success uh, in the Lotus branded software. Adoption of Notes Domino 852 and 853 has been exceeding expectations. How many of you are running 853 servers in your environments? OK. Uh, how many are running 853 clients or, or iNotes users? Yeah, so about, uh, actually more hands on the 853 clients than on the servers. That's interesting. Um, good. But the adoption is sort of more than 70% of the installed base um, running these last two releases from the last 18 months. Uh, as a software provider, that's a very, very good number in terms of adoption of, the, uh, of the, the shipping releases. And it really validates the approach we've taken since 8.0, where we've been shipping incremental new feature releases every year, rather than waiting two to three to four years to put it all together into a major release. Um, Notes Traveler, uh, another success story for us over the last 12 months. I know you've had sessions from Jan and Renee on Traveler and probably others. 
Um, really has been some of the best technology that's come out of my lab team in the last few years. Um, and then on the developer side, Xpages is doing really, really well. And I know there have been several sessions here on Xpages over the last couple of days. Um, the book that our lab team wrote last year, the first book in a trilogy now on Xpages, was IBM Press's best-selling title of all the books they published in 2011. And there are now two follow-ons to that available um, from IBM Press. Uh, the open source community around OpenNTF is seeing um, significant adoption uh, also in the OpenNTF space. So uh, Mr. Heidloff was here yesterday from Germany, and he's been sort of the one-man show behind our contribution to OpenNTF. And um, he highlighted things like the X Pages year that we had uh, in 2011, and we're continuing that, and the number of downloads that we're seeing uh, from OpenNTF. So if you're a developer, being involved in OpenNTF is a very good thing, and I would like to see you know, much more opportunity and participation come out of that community. The examples and the applications that have been out there have been uh, very impressive. So the current shipping release is Notes and Domino 8.5.3. When we were together in uh, the castle last year, we were talking about this as a soon-to-be-released release. Uh, we shipped in early October um, and uh, some of the most interesting characteristics of this release weren't in the update to Notes and Domino itself. They included things like, now we provide you an entitlement to IBM Connections files and profiles at no additional charge as part of your Domino client access licenses. And the idea there was file sharing is among the activities that is the most common thing people do and have historically done in an email environment. We want to get those files out of email and into a collaboration environment. So um, we provided files, and then Profiles was designed to give you a taste of what the social capabilities in connections can offer. And about 15 or 20% of Notes customers have taken advantage of that entitlement on top of the 30% of Notes customers that are buying connections already. So about half of Notes customers already are using or testing IBM connections today. Uh, we also, in 8.5.3, uh, revised our license agreements. Never before in 18 years of doing products work at IBM have I put something about our license agreement on a slide and talked about it. It's not usually that interesting. Um, but in 853, we threw out all 21 years of history of writing notes and domino license agreements and started all over again. And we wrote every single word uh, as if it was a brand new product and we had to write the license for the first time. We got most of it right, not all of it. We're still making some corrections here or there. Um, but what you'll find is the license is now greatly simplified, and the statements in it are all things you cannot do with the license that you've purchased instead of a mix of things that you can or cannot do, which is how we wrote it in the past. Okay. Um, other improvements in 8.5.3, is that a question, or are you just stretching? No, you're just stretching. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I can take questions, but I just, it's fine. Um, other improvements in 8.5.3 uh, included some mailing calendar improvements, as we've done in every release, um, some new tools in the Domino server, including uh, purge interval replication control and being able to put full text indexes, indices on separate volumes, uh, updates to the X pages and designer code, as we've done in every release since 8.5.1. And then this was the first release where we did um, Android 4X and uh, updates to 3X iOS 5 support, um, Symbian Hat 3, and uh, device approval. Okay. Um, this is a case study uh, coming out of um, the, the um, actually probably coming out of the local market. Um, but uh, a, a British business partner is working with ABB and their agents, um, and they've built an XPages application that they uh, call, um, uh, uh, the name's not on there, Risk Based Inse Inspection Plus. It's XPages based, so the, um, the Partners in this ecosystem don't have to buy Notes clients to use the application. They just use the X pages through a browser. What's interesting about this solution is that it's designed to work with a new version of Domino that we shipped with 8.5.3 called IBM XWork Server. And I don't remember if I was talking about XWork Server or not yet when we uh, were together last year. XWork Server is Domino. Don't make any mistake about it. It's exactly the same software product. But much like you see you know, an auto manufacturer make the same car with multiple brands on it, uh, or an appliance company do the same, we decided that it would be interesting to try an approach where we would sell Domino under an IBM brand instead of a Lotus brand, and we would do it at a fixed price, 2,000 US dollars per user per year, or per server per year, um, no CALs, no PVUs, 
just a server license. And um, it, it's an experiment. It's an idea to try out in the market to see whether selling Domino under a different name makes it more interesting to customers that have adopted other solutions for messaging, uh, or whether we have to do yet something else. So far, we like it. We're thinking that Xwork may become uh, the brand for Domino application server generally in the future. We may do more versions of Xwork server. Uh, we're working with partners who are uh, OEMing Xwork server. They're buying it and putting it into their product as a base offering. So uh, there's a lot of power in having segmented the brand around the exact same technology. Okay. All right, um, another sort of in review, and then I'll talk about roadmap, and that'll be a good transition into talking about this year, uh, is our work in the public cloud. So my team is responsible for Notes and Domino, and we don't care whether you're buying it on premises or to run in our public cloud with Smart Cloud for social business, or in a private cloud with Smart Cloud Enterprise, or from a business partner that does hosting. Lots of different choices for delivery. The same development team builds Domino, whether you're running it in an uh, on-premises deployment like you do today, or if you're running it in Smart Cloud Notes. So Smart Cloud Notes has actually been a really, really good project, whether you're going to use public cloud from IBM or not, because the development team that heretofore has only built the software and then shipped it off to you to run it has had to actually run the software. So many of the improvements that you've seen in 8.5.3, 8.5.2 even, uh, in terms of quality, stability, uh, administrative bulletproof strength, those have come out of the result of us running this stuff ourselves for the first time. And so actually, I think it's been a really, really good project. It's also been very successful. We have about 300,000 uh, seats that we've sold of Smart Cloud Notes so far, and um, lots more that may come in the next few days as we head to the end of the quarter. Um, but uh, that's in hundreds of companies on a global basis. Uh, very large companies like Panasonic and General Motors and very small companies that are running one, two, five, or ten licenses. Uh, so we can scale up and scale down. Now the public cloud is about trade-offs. Public cloud doesn't offer you absolutely everything that a premises domino environment does. However, we're IBM and we hesitate to answer customer requests in the negative. So a lot of the things that we've done in the five releases we've shipped so far of Smart Cloud Notes at the speed that a SaaS release should go is adjust for requests that these customers that have bought the product have had already. Um, I think that our competitive differentiators in Smart Cloud for Social Business include that we've integrated all of these capabilities together. So whether you're going from wikis to forums to blogs, uh, to uh, profiles, to file sharing, to e-meetings, to calendar, to mail. Everything in Smart Cloud is one or two clicks away for the user. It doesn't matter what the back-end plumbing is. They sign in once, even on the notes client, all the authentication is handled. There's not this separate sort of wall between the email experience and the chat experience and the sh file sharing experience, et cetera, that you see in other competitive um, cloud offerings. We also are really strong in the fact that we offer a hybrid approach to going to public cloud. So many customers have said, I'm not ready to put everybody in the organization up in public cloud. But um, we may have a bunch of people here at headquarters, and we want to retain our premises environment for those people. But for our remote offices, we want to put those people into a public cloud. Um, so we can do that. It's completely seamless, because it's just Domino. We extend your OU, we connect that into smart cloud, and we're done. There's no data migration, we obviously have to get it up to the server, but there's no conversion of that data. And um, your doc links still work, your directory still works, your admin still works. All the things that you're used to in a Notes Domino environment continue to work in Smart Cloud. So a customer that I'm going to see again on Monday uh, in one of the biggest deals that we signed for Smart Cloud last year is in the um, uh, travel and transportation industry. Uh, and they operate in 84 locations around the world. They decided that instead of having to figure out bandwidth to those locations, some of which are remote islands or small, uh, smaller countries or just generally low bandwidth, that they would rather have IBM provide the, the solution in the public cloud. And so they're moving all 12,000 users in their organization up to smart cloud over the next couple of months. They're also moving their Domino applications into the cloud. So one of the questions we often get is, OK, that's mail, but what do you do with the applications? Our private cloud offering at IBM is called Smart Cloud Enterprise. And Smart Cloud Enterprise can host Domino images in one of seven different data centers in the world. And we do that at fixed per user per month kind of costing in the same way that we do with Smart Cloud uh, Notes. 
So um, we can do both mail and applications and um, deliver those in the cloud, uh, public or private. Okay. This year on the roadmap for um, smart cloud notes, I only have a week to deliver, so I don't think I'm going to hit that first half target. Um, but within the next month or so, we're going to ship a new release of the back end of Smart Cloud Notes. So it's our sixth release. And it's going to do these things on the left, including add IMAP protocol support, um, uh, add some support for uh, Japanese character sets, et cetera. And then these things on the right are things that we're planning to do towards the end of the year or into early 2013 um, to expand the functionality of Smart Cloud. Now, I'm not expecting you to sit there and take down every one of those individual things. The idea is just to give you the impression of all the work that we're doing to update and keep the smart cloud notes environment going to add new capabilities and adjust to customer requirements. So the team's very, very agile in terms of what they do uh, in the cloud. Now, another project that my team is working on in the cloud is called IBM Docs. And this has gone by other names, including Lotus Live Symphony, and before that, it was IBM Project Concord. And IBM Docs, which is in beta now, and you can see this on IBM Greenhouse, is a word processor and a spreadsheet and a presentation tool designed for real-time co-editing um, and storage within a public cloud environment. So if I have a file I want to share with you and then edit with you, um, we can easily do that in the Smart Cloud Notes environment. Um, we've taken the same team that built Symphony and is now working on Apache OpenOffice, which I'll talk about in a second. And they also are building IBM Docs. So this uses IBM Connections as its back end, either in the public cloud or sometime next year in a premises-based environment. So you have a file storage system built in, a kind of a content management approach, and then the ability to edit or view any of those documents within the IBM Docs environment. So um, in the desktop side of the equation with uh, Lotus Symphony, we shipped a 3.01 release, and now we've taken that team and the code, and we've contributed them to the Apache OpenOffice project. So Symfony actually started as a fork of OpenOffice several years ago. And what we've done is said we want to re-merge it with OpenOffice and bring all of the efforts around office productivity and the open source community together around the OpenOffice code. So Apache has shipped their first release of OpenOffice in the last few weeks. And now we're working on Apache OpenOffice version 4, uh, which is the evolution of Symfony from here, here on in. We'll continue to ship and support that as part of your notes license. There'll be an IBM edition of Apache OpenOffice. And then there'll be a cloud and browser-based environment with IBM Docs. Oops. Okay. All right, so let's talk about 2012. Now, if you've seen this presentation, which I've done now since Lotusphere, and on Lotusphere comes to you on lotususergroup.org and, uh, and a number of other roadshows. This has been kind of the schedule for this year, is that we would do first a high availability release for Lotus Notes Traveler, which is coming Tuesday. Um, and then in the second half, we would ship a maintenance release called 854 and a feature release called Notes Domino Social Edition. And the intent was, and the thing that we've been talking about all year, is the idea that that incremental maintenance release would be for those of you who just want an upgrade that's rock solid, rolls up all of the SPR defect fixes, all of the things that we've done for quality and reliability, and all the learnings that we've had from running our smart cloud notes environment. And then you would have a feature pack that we were calling Notes Domino Social Edition um, that you could optionally install on top of 854 to get a whole bunch of really cool new features, which I'm going to describe and we're going to demonstrate some of in just a minute. We didn't want to call it 9, because if I ship a 9.0, you wait for 902. And <laughs> that's what happens, right? I don't want you to wait on this, because these features do not require any architectural changes. We will eventually ship a version 9 as the next feature release after this. But we thought if we could get one more feature release out there that was called 8.5x, and built on the current architecture, that you would get yet more value out of the investments you've made in 8.5 today. So anyway, high availability for Traveler, definitely still shipping next week. Really cool stuff. Hopefully, you went to Jan's session. But the rest of this slide is actually out of date now. Um, I have not announced this anywhere publicly yet. I haven't written about it on my blog. It's a decision that is actually technically being made right now while I'm presenting. There's a committee meeting going on that I'm not on at the moment. So hopefully, they're going to vote yes, because I've now put it on a slide. But we've decided that this whole message around shipping both a maintenance release and a feature release was too confusing. 
That's, you know, after six months of talking about it, every customer I went to said, well, wait, what do I run then? What do, do I have to touch the desktop twice? How do I decide what features I want to adopt? It was just too confusing. And from a marketing perspective, what I kept hearing people say was just 854. And the whole idea was the new feature release was something branded, something that we wanted to talk about loudly in the market as a new feature release so that um, it would get some attention and not just sound like 854. So the decision we've made is to ship a single product at the end of the year called Notes Domino 854 Social Edition. If you want it to just be a maintenance release, you don't have to deploy the new features. But if you want the new features, it's all coming in the same package. So there's not two separate things. There's not two separate names. It's just one thing coming as 854. It still has all the same benefits that I was talking about earlier. Um, it's still easier than going to 9. It's not going to make you wait till, till 902. Um, but it's going to be one thing. So that's a new decision. And I'll probably write about it on the blog in about a week or so. Okay. All right, so what is Notes Domino Social Edition? Uh, it's, it's a feature release primarily focused on client and client interfaces. If you've been paying attention for the last couple of years, we talked about IBM Project Vulkan. And IBM Project Vulkan was a blueprint for what the next releases of Notes and our other products would look like in the future. So the idea is that Notes Domino Social Edition has the ability to provide a much more modern interface, which you're going to see some of in a second, but also some new capabilities. Uh, and the main one is something that we call embedded application experiences. And embedded experiences are um, an ability to run applications right in the context of the Notes client or in the iNotes browser. You don't have to do anything to activate the, that content. So the user never leaves the context of what they're doing. They're just working within Notes or iNotes, and they're able to process application workflow, uh, uh, view videos and attachments. So just work within the context of the Notes environment. So that contextual collaboration vision we've been after for several years. Um, but another key point of emphasis in this release is uh, an increased emphasis on web and mobile. I almost would go to the point of saying web and mobile as primary experiences. Actually, I probably would say that. Uh, more and more organizations are telling us that while the Notes client is great and awesome and wonderful, that there are more and more users that they would like to have, have access to capabilities on the web and capabilities in the mobile environment. Maybe they're traveling, they're in an internet cafe, they're at a hotel business center. They want to be able to not have to worry about having the full Notes client available at all times. So we've built some new capabilities specifically designed for web and mobile for the first time in 22 years. Instead of in the past where we always built the best possible Notes client, and then we came along and we said, OK, well, here's how we're going to make iNotes do the same things. And then we did with Traveler the best of all of that that we could. Now they're all equal. They're equal. So web, mobile, notes, client are all things that we're investing in simultaneously and trying to deliver those capabilities simultaneously. All right, so let's um, get into taking a look at this. Um, this is the default home page. Um, it's not actually the default startup experience. There's, um, something that we're putting in front of this, that when somebody starts Note Social Edition for the first time, they'll get a discovery page that's going to actually tell the end user how to use the features of the Notes client. I know that this is an unusual idea for IBM that we would educate end users. Sorry, don't quote me on that. Um, but that we're actually going to try to help users find more of the capabilities in the product right from their very first launch of the 854 environment. But from there, um, the home page is the default experience. And the activity stream that you see here comes out of IBM Connections. Uh, you can obviously turn that off. Mail and calendar here are gadgets, um, open social gadgets. So they're embedded experiences. We're trying to highlight the technology um, that we're building. The workspace is still there. Don't worry. It's there. You can choose to use it. <laughs> I don't know if you've got it running. But uh, we'll, show it. we'll show I have a screenshot somewhere of the workspace. The workspace no, I don't have it. no, you don't have it? But Roberto's got some other things to show. So let's uh, switch over to demo. OK, thank you. Good morning. This is the client character. Do you like it? Years and years of study to return to 52-50. Even if you've never been to the session. Here it is. This is Notes Domino, Notes 854, Social Edition. Non posso farvi vedere la full Social Edition con gli Activity Stream perché non ho ovviamente l'infrastruttura dietro necessaria, ma questa è l'interfaccia che è aderente 
agli standard One UI. Come diceva Ed, siamo partiti da Project Vulcan, che era un blueprint, e l'implementazione di quel blueprint eh, sta avvenendo attraverso il progetto One UI. One UI, che adesso è la versione 3, vuol dire che tutti i prodotti software avranno un'interfaccia simile. Infatti, se qualcuno ha visto il portale 8, questa vagamente è sulle stesse linee, colore nero, in alto, tab, cose di questo genere. La novità principale appunto è questa, potrebbe cambiare, la build della settimana scorsa qui era bianca, adesso me la sono trovata grigia, quindi in realtà qualche cosina ancora potrebbe essere ridefinito. Comunque questa è l'interfaccia, la cosiddetta One UI, è un tema, quindi semplicemente andando nelle preferenze, uh, no scusate, nelle preferenze di Notes, alla voce... Windows and Teams, scegliete il tema One UI, se no ritornate, se non vi piace, al classico tema. Uh, nero, essenziale, bottoni, classici, niente di nuovo, e anche nel calendario. Il calendario è carino perché, come potete vedere, il colore non prende più tutto il rettangolino dell'evento, dell ma il colore è solo laterale, lasciando l'evento in bianco in modo che sia più facilmente leggibile. Per quel che riguarda il calendario ci sono anche altre viste, ad esempio c'è la vista planner che c'era stata richiesta, per cui ho una vista appunto classica da planner e lo scroll, lo smooth scroll all'interno di un mese, cioè non salta più di mese in mese ma vedete che mi fa giugno-luglio, una seconda. Nella inbox Tornando un attimo indietro, un'altra funzionalità che adesso vediamo è quella di fare il show group by date. Group by date vuol dire che vi fa vedere le mail oggi, yesterday, e vedete che cambia anche il display. Per le mail di oggi è inutile che mi dica il giorno, è oggi, quindi mi mette solo l'ora. Per le altre mi mette una data parlante, ieri, anziché il numero. Il resto della settimana, e in questo caso mi metto il numero, dopodiché andando giù nel resto della settimana, tutta l'ultima settimana, l'ultimo mese e le mail ancora più vecchie. E queste sono sezioni collassabili, per cui volendo io posso escluderne o prenderne qualcuna. Un'altra cosa che abbiamo migliorato carina è la funzione di ricerca. Sapete che se battete nel mezzo del nulla con il mouse puntato nella inbox, un carattere comincia a fare la ricerca, giusto? Niente di nuovo. Ecco, di nuovo c'è questo. Che innanzitutto, essendo nel who, capisce che sono nomi di persone e mi fa look up sulle persone. E non su tutte le parole a casaccio. Dopodiché posso decidere. Posso cercare per who, posso cercare per subject, posso cercare per data, posso cercare per any column. Quindi è una ricerca mirata, molto più raffinata. Qui se io faccio Ed, lui mi propone Ed Brill immediatamente ed ecco qua, sort on the fly. È molto più veloce. Quindi questa è un'altra delle novità. Stesso dicasi per iNotes. Grazie al mio amico René abbiamo l'interfaccia di um, iNotes. Anche questa è One UI, quindi bianco, nero, vista del calendar, Vista della inbox, mail, niente di particolare, reply, forward. Una cosa interessante è questa. Anche se sono nella inbox, tasto destro, ad esempio, mettiamo che io voglia fare un incontro, un meeting con René, dalla inbox mi dà find available time, senza bisogno che io vada nel calendar. E mi fa vedere quali che sono i giorni e le ore buone. Quando decido che va bene, faccio create a meeting e automaticamente mi imposta i settaggi per fare il calendario e non sono mai entrato nella pagina del calendario io sono ancora nella inbox ok? quindi queste diciamo sono <coughs> rapidamente le novità principali della 854 la full social edition ripeto avrà altro l'activity stream eccetera ma in questo momento uh, non l'ho pronto uh, siamo al corrente del fatto che non è finale, potrebbero esserci ancora dei piccoli aggiustamenti, ripeto, sui 
colori, su qualcosina, sulla base dei feedback che stiamo ricevendo dal Design Partner Program, ma indicativamente è quello, questo è quello che vedrete quando installerete l'854. Grazie, Ed, to you. Ok. So you've just seen uh, both uh, Node Social Edition and iNode Social Edition. There are many additional new features planned. Uh, we just yesterday, or this morning technically, uh, Italian time, made the code drop four of the beta available to our design partners and beta customers. So if you're in either of those programs, you can now access the exact same code version that Roberto just showed you. Um, and we obviously welcome your feedback on that. But there's one other thing. I feel like Steve Jobs <laughs> in sort of respect, right? Uh, one more thing uh, that's part of the uh, Notes Domino Social Edition release. And um, my example is not going to translate here, but that's fine. Uh, for many years, many of you have asked us, how do I take my notes applications to the web? Right? I, we have, since Domino 4.6, been trying to provide ways to take notes applications and make them available on the web. Uh, Domino as a project first started as a way to take notes applications and move them to the web. Problem is some of the applications that we have out there need engineering to make them into good web applications. They need changes in their forms, changes in their workflow, changes in their logic, and that can be expensive to engineer specifically for the web or mobile. Um, so for um, the last few years, partners have been uh, doing modernization of Notes Domino applications through XPages, which of course run in the client as well. Um, and that's been a great solution because we think XPages is the technology to use on the web. Um, modernizing Notes applications into XPages applications makes a lot of sense. But it can be expensive. And many of you have applications that probably aren't worth investing in to modernize. They're a team room or a discussion forum that's been around for 10 years, and there's no value add in making it look prettier or more web-like just by putting it on the web. So um, our development team took this challenge last year and said, well, what if we could make notes run on the web? Seems like a good idea. Um, so they came up with an engineering project to take the notes client itself and have it run as a plugin in the browser, just like Acrobat or other plugins that you're familiar with in the browser environment. It is not an installation of the Notes client. It's a 50 or 60 megabyte download, runs as a plugin, managed as a plugin, but it's Notes. It is uh, NRPC, it is rendering as a Notes client, not at HTML. It's using port 1352. It's using your Notes ID file. It is the Notes client, but it's not the Notes client, right? So um, it, it's not a standalone client application anymore. It's just running in the browser. Very lightweight. Um, initially on Windows, Firefox, and IE. Um, I don't have a live demo of this because it's only initially Windows, but we'll uh, take a look at it. Me neither. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, okay. We're Mac and Linux. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look at a, uh, a video. Let me make sure my sound is off. Now the person who built this video for me, oh, that's actually the old one, hang on. Go back to the, the newer version. I, I should delete the older version. The person who made the video for me um, in the narrated version spends one minute uh, narrating and talking and talking and talking. So um, I will just uh, jump ahead on that full screen. OK. So we will go zzz. OK. <laughs> I guess it would be boring if I turned the sound on. <laughs> Um, so this is a notes discussion template from, who can guess what version? I think it's version 7. I'm not sure, but I think it's version 7 because it's got the little bubble labels on the buttons for new main topic and new response. Um, and we're in the notes client right now. So we're going to do an amazing demonstration here. We're going to create a new document in a discussion. I don't know what the, wait, wait, no, no. Let's go to create a new document in a discussion. All right, note, I have to go two minutes into the video. Next time, somebody remind me, two minutes into the video. All right, uh, new topic in a discussion, and um, have some text in there, and we'll go ahead and save it. And amazing, we have a new topic in a discussion. Uh, notes has come a long way in 22 years. Uh, 
That's a joke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay to laugh at me. It's the end of the conference. So, <laughs> all right. So now we're in a browser. It happens to be Firefox, and we're talking and talking again. And okay, so I skipped a little too far here. All right, we're going to go to the URL, and you see notes colon syntax in the URL, and up comes your password prompt. And log in. And wow, it's a notes discussion template. But it's in a browser now, now not in the notes client. Okay. So there's nothing else I can show you about this browser plugin. It's not a really good demo because it just looks like notes. It is notes, but it's notes running in the browser. And we have all the right click options. We have you know, the button bar. So everything you're used to in the notes environment except a self-installed standalone notes client. So this uh, browser plugin, um, which at Lotusphere we were still calling something more complicated, the Notes Application Player plugin, but we have simplified the name to the Notes Browser plugin because that's what it is, um, is part of the Social Edition release as well. So um, another option in the direction of web and mobile. Okay. All right. Oh, the workspace works on the browser too. So, okay. Uh, on the Domino server side, only a few new features in Domino 854, and that's mainly because it's a client-focused release. Um, but they include SAML support, which we're harvesting out of um, Smart Cloud Notes, uh, OAuth, which uh, Mr. Robichaud just uh, gave an excellent presentation on, and a, a new database management tool to help with things like updates and uh, Compact, et cetera, bringing that all into one tool instead of finding it in lots of different menus. On Traveler, um, this release is... Um, uh, the 854 release has kind of three things. One is a significant update to the Android client, especially for the tablet form factor. One of the great decisions that we made, although I was initially against it, see Jan's in the room, so I have to be honest now, uh, uh, was that we built our own Android client. On iOS, we use Apple's because Apple's really good at building user interface. People love the iOS mail and calendar, right? To your end users, they're like, this is great. This is the best thing you've given me in years. Too bad I can't you know, use rich text or attach files or anything that I'm used to, but it's really, really great. So that's what users tell us about iOS. On Android, we have the ability to do all those things because we're writing our own client. We're not waiting for the Android community to come up with new features in the client. So one of the things we're doing, for example, is introducing same-time presence awareness in the Traveler client. So it's as good as being on the desktop or on a browser in the mobile experience. Because we build the same time client, we build the mail client. So we've been able to do that. We're also adding support for to-dos, tasks, on both iOS and Android. And in this release, we will add support for Windows Phone 7.5. Anybody care about Windows Phone? Windows Phone, anyone? Do you, can you translate that? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Nobody cares about Windows Phone. Guess what? I don't either. So why are we doing it? Because I get a full Active Sync implementation in Traveler, and it'll work with any device at that point, whether it's Windows Phone or other, some Sony Ericsson thing, some Taiwanese import. It all speaks Active Sync. So we're going to be able to support, not support, right? You can't call us for support on those devices. But any device will run on Traveler. So that's really why we did it. Now, you know, Nokia are our partner. They're actually a really good partner of ours. They have been for many years. And they insist that the Lumio is going to be very successful uh, in the business market. It may be waiting for Windows Phone 8.0. And I can't help but take a little dig at Microsoft. They announced yesterday that you can't upgrade existing Windows Phone hardware to Windows Phone 8. A rip and replace from Microsoft. Who would have imagined this? <laughs> <laughs> But we are supporting Windows Phone 7.5 initially, and that will be upward compatible to version 8. So we'll be OK. Um, so this is why we're doing Windows Phone. So that'll be in the Traveler release as well. Don't take any of that back to Lee and Eric. <laughs> it was a very long internal religious debate. OK. All right, so one more topic and um, uh, I'll get, uh, one more demo, and then we'll kind of wrap up. So one other project my team is working on is not directly in um, uh, notes and iNotes Social Edition, it's another version of email. If you've worked with IBM Connections today, you know that IBM Connections does not today have a capability to access email or calendar. It is the one piece of a social environment that's not in the social software platform that we offer. 
we actually really felt that we needed to build a way to access mail that was simple and, and social and integrated and secure. And we took a completely separate project to work on that. We've actually been working on this for many, many years. Um, and so now we're starting to actually ship it. So what Connections Mail is, is a feature in IBM Connections 4, um, which is shipping next quarter, so about 80, 90 days away, um, that delivers the ability to access your inbox and calendar as sort of a simple triage tool within the context of IBM Connections. So I'm not going to have to worry about going back to my inbox and folders and all the things in my mail client if all I want to do is just check for new mail. I don't even have to leave the context of IBM Connections to do that. I just have a little drop down that Roberto is about to show us, and I can access the latest mail. We've done this in a theme similar to what Apple has done. We've used very simple user interface, few features, not many, with progressive disclosure to get access to more. So it's meant to be a very, very lightweight mail experience. And you can always go back to your notes client or browser, or if you're stuck on that other mail system, you can go to Outlook directly from the Connections Mail environment. So we're going to support both a Domino and an Exchange backend with this product. So it's an opportunity for us to get into accounts with Exchange Mail servers that want to use IBM social software. It's a really good thing. So over time, not in the first release, but over time, Connections Mail is going to take advantage of some of the analytics capabilities we have at IBM and not display all your mail. It will only display the mail that's relevant to the particular task and activity you're working on at any given time in the Connections environment. So we're going to get intelligent about social mail. So the idea of social mail is very important to us. It's a category we intend to invent and define with this. Let's take a look. Yes. <clears throat> allora. Questa è, fra l'altro per chi non l'avesse ancora vista l'anteprima, è l'interfaccia di Connections 4, questo è l'ambiente beta nel quale sto lavorando e non è molto diversa da quella di Notes e di Notes che vi ho fatto vedere, è One UI, i temi scelti sono il bianco e il nero, il menu drop down, i simbolini delle icone sono gli stessi ed ecco qua. Questa è la mail, non è la stessa mail che vi ho fatto vedere prima perché sono su un server di test. Comunque io posso vedere tutti i messaggi che mi sono arrivati e si espandono automaticamente, comunque se no poi posso allargarli e vedere tutto il messaggio, posso fare reply, forward, mark and read, move to, qualunque cosa io voglia fare e posso anche fare nuovi, nuovi messaggi. Quindi ad esempio mi fa il look up delle persone, bla bla bla, test, posso mandare un messaggio alla mia amica Dunsa che poi tanto mi picchia, quindi non c'è nessun problema. E allo stesso modo posso vedere gli appuntamenti del calendario. In questo momento la visione è giorno per giorno, come diceva Ed, ci saranno ulteriori modifiche, si potrà magari avere qualche vista in più, piuttosto che qualcosina di, di più anche a livello di visualizzazione della inbox o con le analytics, come diceva lui, vedere visualizzata solo la mail contestuale rispetto all'attività che sto facendo. Uh, qualunque sistema di mail è accettabile, quindi Domino Exchange, e niente, questo è quello che vi potrete aspettare nella versione 4 di Connection. La versione 4 di Connection, nuda e cruda, non, cioè non siete obbligati ad averla. Per quello che sono i piani adesso, voi avete Connections 4 punto, oppure poi c'è un pezzo in più da aggiungere per fare il connettore con il sistema di posta di back-end, ma potete anche non averlo se non vi interessa. E questo è quanto, stessa interfaccia, stessi colori e niente di particolare. Ed? Grazie. Ok. So we've shown you Notes and Nomino Social Edition, we've shown you Connections Mail, and we mentioned Traveler HA. Those are the things that are shipping in the remainder of the year, along with IBM Docs in the public cloud and a new version of uh, Smart Cloud Notes, which is coming in July, and then hopefully another one by the end of the year. So my team has been in work behind the scenes mode for the first six months of the year. We haven't shipped anything yet, really. Um, and we're going to be in all action mode for the remaining six months of the year, shipping a whole bunch of new products uh, over that time. So then I always get asked, okay, what, what happens next? We have already started the planning for, maybe we'll call it Notes 10. 
we like the Apple style, like we want to do the Roman numeral 10 thing, that's cool. Something like that. Some new version, which we'll ship in probably early 2014. Um, that work is underway now, and we have started to design what we're going to do with the server and the client and the browser interface uh, in that release. Um, we are going to take more of the features out of Smart Cloud Notes and put them into the premises product, and we're going to integrate uh, more with the rest of the products across the IBM collaboration portfolio. The social mail experience that Roberto just showed you, we want to converge with the iNotes mail experience. So there's a light mode and an ultra light mode and a super ultra light mode. No, that's not in there. Um, there's lots of modes in the iNotes. We want to converge those together. So use this simplified user interface we've built for connections mail and put that uh, into the iNotes environment. So that's one of many things that are on the to-do list for the next release. All right, so I said I was going to hint at one other minor announcement. It's a very, very subtle thing. Um, one of the things that was an unintended consequence of the change I made three years ago now, where we switched to CALs, client access licenses, instead of selling Domino Designer as a separate product, is that in Express, you don't have a CAL, you have an Express license. And so, um, we've had this thing where you, you didn't buy Domino Designer anymore, but you had to have a Cal to use Domino Designer. So we found through working with our, our um, compliance auditors over the last couple of years that that's been a very, very confusing point. So with 854 Social Edition, Domino Collaboration Express will include the right to use Domino Designer. Um, so you won't have to buy some separate license. Each user that has an Express license will have the right to use Designer which is the same thing that we do in the enterprise product. So um, more on that as we finalize that. I don't think I've gotten a final approval on that, but hey, that's all right. Um, so that's one new thing that will come in the 854 social edition packaging as well. We'll also update some of the entitlements. The entitlement co connections files and profiles will get updated to version four of those products. The entitlement of Tivoli Directory Integrator will probably be upgraded to 7.1. Um, and then there's a new version of Mobile Connect which was called Lotus Mobile Connect and will now be called IBM Mobile Connect, um, which is shipping a 615 this quarter and is not on my slides because it's yet another thing to talk about. Um, and that, up, that um, entitlement in the Domino Cal will be updated as well. So um, 853, successful release coming this year, a single release, easy to consume, lots of new features. Um, we're continuing to do our application development work. I sort of left that off scope for this presentation because I am almost out of time. Uh, our cloud evolution continues in both public and private cloud, uh, and connections mail will make the mail experience more social in the context of both the messaging collaboration and the social software environments. So I have left myself a few minutes if you have any questions that I can answer. It's a big room, though. Yeah. <coughs> questions? No? Hmm? What, that you can't see my email address? Nobody uses email anymore. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's dark. It's on here I can read it, but uh, I'll have to change that color. Um, I do get far less email now than I used to, though, so all that social stuff really works. Questions? Anything I can answer? Yes, CC. The question that came up yesterday um, about the browser plugin. Yes. and you hit the server the first time, it will say or tell you, look, you don't have the browser plugin, but you can get it from there. Boy, that'd we be know cool. it's not here, but yeah. is it like, you know? It, that would be cool, but yes. it's, it, it, we can't do that because the browser won't know what the notes colon URL syntax is right. unless it has the plugin installed. Okay. So deployment is something we still need to work on. Deployment is something we always need to work on for the client, right? Um, there's lots of good third parties out there for deployment options. Uh, so still TBD a little bit on that. We're looking at the beta feedback to try to figure out what the, the right approach is going to be. But no, it, it can't quite do the self-deployment thing because the browser won't know what it is. Thank good you. Good question, though. Okay. Other questions? <laughs> Way in the back, just a <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to have some practice with his uh, jogging, you know? 
<laughs> I know it's out of practice. Um, so, um, again, about the Notes plugin for browsers, uh, will uh, the uh, local replica support be included? Will local replica support be included? Don't know yet whether we'll do that in the first release. The engine is there, replication engine is there. Not sure whether we'll try to teach it how to handle a local replica in the first release or not. But if you think about it, it's a much better solution than dominant offline services for the browser to use actual notes replication. So I don't think we'll get it in the first release, but I think we'll, we will be looking at how to do that. Okay, thank you. The, the reason for asking that was uh, figuring out what could happen if uh, um, by having, uh, by still having a local notes client, uh, in case of malfunction of it, uh, using the plugin could be a fast, uh, mm. fast okay. uh, solution. Okay, an interesting use yeah. case. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We will, we will think about that. Okay. Others? Yes. <laughs> He's not jogging it's now. It's not just out of, ex of exercise with jogging, but also with balancing. Um, so are we finished with installing Nose clients? Can we rely solely on the Nose plugin? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Um, I think this is for so first extreme of all, situations. Sorry? In extreme situations, can <laughs> we say we are finished with installing no, Nose plugin? I think there's a lot of value in the Notes client. I think that um, you know, it, it, offline is still a, a major use case. Um, we're not putting the full Eclipse framework around that Notes client. So if you've done anything that takes advantage of Eclipse, um, you know, that would be a, a use case that, that won't function in that environment. Um, we're not putting XPINC, you know, not XPages support in that, in that plugin. Um, but you'd be using XPages in the browser anyway if you have written them. Um, I think there are a lot of organizations that tell us that they want to deploy a client, they'd like it to be easier, and we, again, say there are a lot of great third-party tools for that. Um, but there are also clearly organizations that would like to just go browser for everything. For that organization, then the client is maybe not gonna be as important. But you really wanna understand your own requirements before you make a decision like that, because you'll be surprised at how many applications are hard-coded, expect a local replica, you know, do this with the local address book. You know, there's all sorts of things out there that you really have to think about before you say we're gonna walk away from the client entirely. Okay. Yeah. In 8.5.4, you're including the open social container. I yes. mean, okay. Uh, is this going to be uh, available to host open social gadgets, right, with, the, with Domino, without any other infrastructure? No. No. Um, Too bad. <laughs> open social needs a back end. Yeah. And the Apache Shindig project is typically what people deploy to provide support for an open social gadget. Mm -hmm. It's an open source project, so it's no cost involved. But it is another server component that does have to be in the environment, is Shindig, to support those open social gadgets. Are you considering bundling Shindig as part or extension to uh, the Domino server? We have discussed it, but we will not do it in 8.5.4. Um, the, the developers who work on open social and, and embedded experiences have pushed very hard for us to figure out this problem, but we don't have enough time to figure it out for 8.5.4. Okay. So I, I hear you. And I get it, and I don't want to introduce complexity, but it's a standard that does require a back end, and right now that back end's an open source project, and we'd like to leave it as an open source project. Okay, so it's something that, that's a good project for OpenNTF? Possibly, that would sound great, actually. I'd be very excited about that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, you wrote that uh, um, the plugin will be available both for Internet Explorer and Firefox. Is, si. uh, this will be uh, from the first version? Uh, first version, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Chrome may come later. Okay. But first version, IE in Firefox. Thank you. But not IE 6. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you can say IE 6 in an IT crowd and everybody just laughs. <laughs> okay. One more, maybe? No? Yeah. In the, towards the, you've got to run again. Dimagrisco. <laughs> 
Hi. Will the basic installation uh, still available of the client? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, but yes, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. Have, I've tried to kill it many times, but it's, it's, it's got a life of its own. The basic edition will not be called social. The basic configuration will not be called social edition. There's nothing <laughs> social about the basic configuration, but Thank it will be there. Thank you. Okay. Not really the question I wanted to end on, but we'll take it. All right. Anything else? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.